And how's it going everyone and welcome to our first double unboxing and review on the channel. Jonathan here with Boston Collectors and we figured we'd go ahead and condense this review for you all to save a little bit of time. Both art boxes share the same overall dimensions with subtle changes here and there where it makes sense. There isn't anything groundbreaking here, but the cardboard used for the box is thinner in design, unlike what we typically receive with a standard release. The cigar band isn't present either. It would have overlapped a lot of the standard text and imagery to where it looked a bit sloppy, so I don't blame them for leaving it off. Apart from that, the box is much lighter than you'd expect it to be for a vehicle. This goes for both Oppo and the Heavy Clone Trooper releases. We'll touch more on that later. Mine came in a bit dinged up, but again, the cardboard is rather thin. In typical fashion, we have the art insert for Commander Oppo showcasing a few other pieces. The only major difference for the Heavy Weapons clone is the art insert. There are a few pieces here that don't exist for the releases shown. While the photo looks nice, the 332nd clones are utilizing hands that never came with them. This feels more like a blogger photo where all bets are off versus an official photo taken by Hot Toys. This is where possibly adding extra hands for collectors would have been nice to have, but more on that later. Upon removing the art insert, you're able to see how everything was packaged. I know what I signed up for when I picked this up, so I'm not deducting points here. However, there's a lot of real estate in the packaging where other things could have been included to spruce up the release. This could be the $550 price tag talking, but hear me out. If not a battle jewelry, maybe even a standard 501st for the sidecar release would have been nice too. I'm getting ahead of myself though. <laughs> With the time it took to piece this together, help us out by liking this video and subscribing for more. Let's continue. Out of the box, Oppo's release is similar to Captain Rex. For whatever reason, he wasn't given a pair of neutral hands. This is something you'll have to make up for on your own if it bothers you as much as it does me. The right gesture is fine and something we've seen before, but for a release this expensive, out of like pairs. We did receive a pair of trigger hands though. You'll see them used throughout the rest of this segment for the weapons included. Speaking of, Oppo comes with a pair of DC-17 blaster pistols for his release. There's nothing new here, understandably so. If he isn't using them in your display, you can holster on both the left and right side of him. Also included is the DC-15 blaster, which is another weapon we're all familiar with. Like the DC-17 blasters, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. For the Bark Speeder, Hot Toys included a pair of gripping hands. We've seen this mold previously through another release being the Coruscant Guard. I find them beneficial for other accessories we'll discuss later on. Let's switch gears to the Heavy Weapons Clone Trooper. Out of the box, he's the same as Commander Oppo. One neutral hand and one gesturing hand. There's an all new paint scheme for this clone armor that we haven't received through previous releases. It's cool, but again, for the price tag, I would have wanted pairs. He was also given a pair of trigger hands and one DC-17 blaster pistol as seen previously for Oppo. When not in use, it can holster at his right side. Interestingly enough, the DC-15 blaster is the final weapon included for him. While collectors like me have the 501st Deluxe, I feel for those who don't and spent over $600 for him to only have a pistol and a rifle at his disposal. For the Bark Speeder, he was also given a pair of gripping hands, but for me, he'll be using it for the Z6 rotary cannon from the 501st Deluxe release. These are great for not only holding the front portion of the rotary cannon, but the trigger at the end of it as well. The satchel is another standout piece for the heavy weapons clone and include three removable munitions found along the strap. The entire bag is also made up of a canvas-like material. To aid in maintaining its shape, Hot Toys added a square foam piece and opted to sew the bag shut. Both the Heavy Weapons Clone Trooper and Commander Oppo received standard base options 
featuring their respective names on a tinfoil sticker. The overall base top is similar to what we've seen from the Clone Wars Ahsoka and Captain Rex, so the continuity is present if it helps your display. These particular clones aren't flying around, so a crotch grabber will have to do. I mean it, by the way. They aren't pre-equipped with a magnet for jetpack use. As mentioned earlier, if you have an extra launcher lying around, you can use it for your heavy weapons clone. The same goes for the DC-15. There are quite a few pieces missing from both releases that are typically standard for a clone. It's just interesting to see what they chose to leave off. On the other hand, the DC-17M is one of several options if you'd like a more refined look to your clone. Because we value your time, we won't go over every option available, but if you're an army builder or you just enjoy collecting clones, the options are limitless. At this point, you could pose up your clones and you're all set, but we aren't quite finished. Beginning with the Rocky style diorama bases, we've seen these a few times before. This particular base is from Commander Oppo's release due to the positioning of the insert for the vehicle pole. This base was seen previously through the Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike set. Nevertheless, it's painted well and sell the idea of a rocky terrain through bits of speckling paint. The vehicle pole is easy to install and straight to the point if you're familiar with them. Once installed, align the shape of the pole to the insert inside of the speeder. We have multiple points of articulation, beginning with the flaps at the nose of the vehicle. Not too many people will care to see the reverse side of them, but at least they weren't excluded from being detailed and weathered. The base of the pedals can extend ever so slightly, allowing for just enough wiggle room for taller figures not to mention the lower portion to really dial in your pose. While none of the clones can magnetize their feet to the vehicle, you don't really have to concern yourself about that. The groove at the heel of the pedal works great for securing the feet of your figure. Next, we have the handlebars with soft locking points. I find that the points are far in between, which is great for those of us aiming for a certain look. While the bars at the lower end only articulate up and down, the higher handlebars have a bit more play to their mechanics. Even if you don't plan to overextend your pose, I'm glad to see we can push them to this extent. If not, a neutral position is good enough for a lot of us. As for slotting the laser cannons, the keyholes are rather tight, so some pressure is required, at least for mine. The cannons feature an animated appearance, but I find they work well with characters appearing in live action format like Anakin and Obi-Wan. The gray paint application is similar to the weapons included with a lot of the clones we've purchased before. There's a subtle amount of weathering to the build, and they sell the idea of being fired in combat. I'd imagine Wrecker could get away with using them too whenever he's released. And now that the back cannons are installed, we can move forward with the front facing cannons. At the lower base of the articulated flaps, you'll find the keyhole to insert the cannons. Note the spiral portion near the end of the barrel. These are meant for the nose of the vehicle and not the back. The entire build of the Bark Speeder is a marvel from every angle. From the rear, it appears a fighter jet, yet an airplane all at once. Not to mention the weathering, even though I feel a bit more could have been added in a splash-like direction. The nose of the speeder does a great job at showcasing debris chipping away at the vehicle paint, and also noting the amazing line work found throughout. There isn't mixed media here, so your clone will need an ass of steel to get through the workday. Again, it does a great job at appearing as animation. 
I must admit, I was rather skeptical before unboxing this set due to the weight of the box. This isn't a piece you want with weight to it because of how long it is. The weight of the vehicle would warp some of the outer extremities the vehicle might end up needing to lean on. I found the vehicle looked similar to a praying mantis. I'm uncertain if this were modeled after them, but I know Doug Chang is inspired by nature for the vehicles he illustrates. As for smaller details like the dashboard, there are intricate patterns sculpted in. Can't say I'd be excited to install additional pieces here if they were included. With what appears as an exhaust, I wasn't wowed by it at first. However, when shadow is introduced, it lengthens the trail of it drastically until appearing natural. This can also be said for a lot of different areas of the speeder. The length of the vehicle is hard to understand in video form. So while it's a little over 26 inches in length, we've enlisted a few clones to provide an alternative idea. You'll need quite a bit of space to properly display this one. <laughs> Moving over to the heavy weapons clone bark speeder, the base insert is centered here rather than the base with oppo. Due to the sidecar, this is the appropriate way to keep the center of gravity so it doesn't tip forward. Both designs are the same, but for the opposite base, the pole insert is simply covered by a rock. In an effort to reduce the length of our review, we decided to compare both speeders to look for any changes between them. Here you'll notice the heavy weapon speeders sit noticeably higher due to the position of the vehicle pole on the base. Apart from that, everything's the same. From the battle damage to the weathering and everything in between. I will say, the only difference is due to the ink and how it was applied. The scuffs and weathering are a bit more prominent on Oppo's release, unlike the Heavy Clone where the paint application was softer. The stand included with the Heavy Weapons Clone is meant to hold the sidecar when it's separated from the vehicle and shooting behind. Installation is to the point, but it isn't meant for it to be freestanding this way on its own. I feel as though this could have been handled better and came with a smaller rocky display base for the price. It gets the job done for what it's worth, but it does feel a bit cheap the way they handled this. Installing the sidecar to the bark speeder is tricky if you don't read the instructions first. There is an order to it. First, you'll need to identify both insertion points found beneath and along the side of the speeder. After doing so, you'll want to take the included brace that will anchor and attach the sidecar to the vehicle. Next, we'll need to take the included plastic stand to hold up both vehicles. You'll notice the notch on both sides are different. The highest is meant to hold up the sidecar, whereas the lowest is meant for the bark speeder. You don't want to install the sidecar this way. It's far more frustrating than it is fun. Instead, consider attaching this while it isn't on the stand. When you're done, peg it into place and you're almost set. At the tail of both bark speeder releases, you'll find one last insertion point for the sidecar to attach to. With this piece swiveled out, plug it in and now you're set. Hot Toys' attention to detail might have been pulled away from the cheap stand for the sidecar, but the overall detail to it wasn't. The Greeblies found along the attachment in the vehicle are phenomenal. The inside area looks a bit sketchy, but we'll touch on this in a bit. Similar to the main vehicle, the sidecar pedals are articulated, but it doesn't end there. There's an attachable piece you'll need to key in to lay down cover fire where needed. The handles are articulated and the entire structure of the piece can swivel left to right based on how you'd like to pose your clone. These are delicate though, so be careful. Similar to the laser cannons on the bark speeder, 
They share an animated look, but pass for use with live action pieces in the collection if needed. When it's all set up, you'll definitely need more than a coffee table to display this. It doesn't stop there, because the sidecar can adjust its length depending on the figure occupying it. If you're needing extra space to fit a clone, simply slide out the bottom portion of the sidecar and raise it, although it does tend to lower over time. I'd suggest installing the hands on the handle separately from the clones due to how delicate the handlebars are. You don't want to break these accidentally. Now that we're done, it's finding a pose to help get the idea across. Do us a favor and like this video for us and subscribe to the channel for future content just like this. There isn't anything different when it comes to Apple's helmet design. They really took the base model of the 501st helmet, applied subtle markings, and took away others. Although the one thing that is identical between both are the scuffs in the blue painted area. But like a lot of previous clones, we can use attachments. After popping out the earpiece, you can use the micro binoculars, for example. If you want to beef up the look a little more, the torch can be used on either side of the helmet, depending on personal preference. A rangefinder can also be installed for a different appeal. You could go all out and attach everything to his helmet if you'd like, but I think he'll end up without them for me. However, there are a few more ideas I'd like to share. You could have him serving under Ahsoka as a different clone. Swapping the heavy clone helmet, if that's what you're into. Or you could also upgrade him to Captain Vaughn's helmet too. Lastly, we have what a lot of customizers use for a standard clone portrait, being Commander Cody. It would have been awesome to get a nod to the earlier version of Oppo with the arrow on his helmet, but Hot Toys didn't think it was necessary. The armor for that particular helmet is different, but I still would have liked it. The Heavy Weapons clone, on the other hand, is all new. While we've seen this design before through previous releases like Commander Cody and Captain Vaughn, this one isn't equipped with the antennas used on those clones. Unlike Oppo, the Heavy Weapons clone can't use additional attachments for his helmet, not even the earpieces seen on characters like Commander Cody. That doesn't take away from its design though, because it's the first of its kind for the 501st Legion produced by Hot Toys. Everything representing the 501st Battalion is here by way of the blue colorway. Like Oppo, you could swap helmets depending on your mood, such as a standard shiny helmet seen here. Or you could represent for the Phase 1 team. We want to preface this with letting you all know more about the differences from previous clones to what we have here today. If you own any of the recent clones like Jesse, Rex, and Vaughn, the articulation is the same. Beginning with Oppo, you'll notice far more debris buildup on the lower portion of his armor, unlike the previous 501st releases. It does a great job at conveying the idea of riding around on a bark speeder, which would dirty up this area of the armor. The same goes for the feet, although I do feel they could be dirtier. Next, we have a new type of comma joining the collection with more of a gritty feel to its texture and design. The battle damage to it is rather amateur since it appears if someone really sat down and used scissors to snip them in. Nevertheless, I like the texture of it and would prefer this type of fabric moving forward. Lastly, the comma is velcro beneath the belt and anchored by two points towards the middle. Moving on, we have ammo cases found around the bicep armor and along his chest. The cases are on an elastic strap and allow for a little wiggle room while posing. As for the bicep armor, I had a case fall off during posing and had to super glue it back. These aren't exactly secure, so you'll want to be careful. 
the first thing I did out of the box was check for posing around the pauldron. While it is limited, it's nowhere near like it is with Rex. It's far more flexible, thinner in design, and allow for more freedom while posing. Here you can get an idea of what the pauldrons look like between Oppo and Rex. While the designs are different, you can't tell the difference in the overall thickness of the plastic. Rex's pauldron is rather thick, and this is the highest his arm can go. If you have this figure, you know what we're talking about. Whereas Oppo, you can bend and pose around the pauldron to a certain extent, but you have to admit, this is far better than Rex. Moving in for a closer look, the edge of Oppo's pauldron is bending, even though it isn't quite obvious here. Rex, on the other hand, obviously isn't moving. <laughs> if this were a lower batch size release, I can see why Hot Toys used Oppo to try out a few ideas. They have the clone formula down, but these subtle changes are pretty good. As we segue over to the heavy clone trooper, we have a lot of changes to his design that we've never seen before. If you're familiar with Star Wars Battlefront 2, rep your battalion in the comments for us and let us know what you think. We don't have a clone where the entire piece is not only covered in the 501st blue colorway, but riddled with debris from riding in his bark speeder. The shoes about match the amount of debris as the armor, and they're far dirtier than any of the clones before him. Interestingly enough, the Negars aren't using the same scuffs as any of the previous 501st clones. They're unique to this release. The same goes for the thigh armor. The blue stripe is painted on the outer portion for both sides. With the Heavy Weapons clone design, we have his chest pad along an elastic band, which is fed into his belt. It appeared to use the same portion of the belt found with previous troopers, but modified to secure his chest padding. Although I do wonder why Hot Toys left one of the pouches as is on the back. Not to mention, this piece is also velcroed and can be adjusted if need be. As for his pauldron, I'm happy to say he received the same love as Commander Oppo. It can flex and bend for an array of poses far better than the likes of Jesse and Rex. There's also a textured feel to it with tiny bits of detail found along its design. As for the satchel, it does crowd the figure a bit while posing, but I can't have the guy go without it. It can get a bit out of hand, but once you find the pose, it comes together quite nicely. Surprisingly enough, this trooper ended up wowing me the most, even though he wasn't packaged with items I feel he should have had. It doesn't take away from the design, which helps him stand out from the rest of his brothers. To summarize my feelings about these purchases, I am rather conflicted. For almost $1,300, I can't recommend getting these with the current state of the world. If you happen to have the money and you're looking to pick up one, I'd lean into the Heavy Weapons clone myself. While both pieces are cool, the Heavy Weapons clone is an all-new 501st design, alongside the Bark Speeder and the Sidecar, which works for a lot of us army builders. Considering we have the ARF Trooper and the ATRT coming soon, where you could get two for roughly 900-ish, I think these were just sold at a bad time. Outside of that, when you put everything on the table, you realize you're missing quite a bit that we receive from standard clone releases. These are cool sets, but I have to admit, it doesn't feel like I've spent $1,200 here. I'd have spent far less if they chose to release the clones separately, though. The Heavy Weapons clone not having heavy weapons is rough. There's quite a bit of space in the packaging where they could have given us standard hands or spoiled us with pairs. With that said, I'm giving this set a 5 out of 10. It is fun, but I don't like feeling forced into buying a set when I just want the figures. The speeders are really cool, but as it stands, I just don't have the space to display them properly. Until then, an updated room tour is on the way and we're aiming for either November or December. We also have quite the stash of figures to review that we're behind on. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and like this video for us and subscribe for more. This is Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. Catch you next time.